Welcome to the After Message edition of our Westridge podcast. Each week, our goal is to have an open and honest conversation around the scripture and principles shared in the teaching here on Sunday mornings at Westridge Church. So glad you're listening into our conversation today. And now, here is your host for today's podcast. Hey, everybody. I'm Nate Galloway, and I get to be our host today. Uh, But before I introduce our guest today, I want to encourage you to download and subscribe to our podcast and hit that notification button so you'll know when the next episode is out. Yesterday, we continued our series in the Gospel of Mark. The message was from chapter 5, verses 21 through 43, where we see Jesus encounter two people in different but very desperate situations. So I'm looking forward to jumping into our discussion with my guest today. Um, Before I actually introduce him, I want to say this. When I knew I was going to be hosting today, um, I had one person in mind. When I looked at what the scripture was, uh, which actually is uh, a scripture that's helped me through a lot of different seasons of life, um, just knowing a little bit about his story that he has shared with me, I just knew who I wanted to sit with to have this conversation. So my guest today, um, as J.P. Morgan, Dr. J.P. would say, I have Steve, the real deal, Bill. He is our executive pastor of ministry as my guest today. Um, Steve, how you feeling? Man, I'm... I'm feeling okay. You sure? <laughs> yesterday, yesterday morning was a long morning, and then, like I was telling you before we started, you know, my young adult, young adult kids, um, one of them, Micah, and, and his fiance, were over last night. We were talking wedding stuff, and they had stayed all day hmm. and through dinner and into the <laughs> evening. So I woke up this morning tired, man, but I'm excited to be here. Well, good. Hopefully, in our yeah. tiredness, we'll just lean on Jesus yeah. today. Oh, Maybe yeah. He'll redeem our what time. A great, what a great uh, topic to talk about. Hey, Amen. Yeah. I really did mean it. Um, you know, I, I, this is actually before I knew you were actually preaching the mm-hmm. message, but mm-hmm. I knew when I was hosting and I looked at the passage for yeah. this past Sunday, I just knew that you were the person I wanted mm-hmm. to sit with. So thank you for that invitation. Just stuff yeah. that you oh, shared yeah. yesterday, but you had already shared with me and just sure. our different stories. Everybody's yeah. been through stuff, but I just yeah. knew that you were a person who could could relate and yeah, could bring a real sure. personal you know, touch to, to the scripture. And so, you know, in the context of, of what you really shared as you unpacked um, that end of Mark chapter five, where we see um, Jairus and, and the woman with the issue of blood, um, you really kind of framed the whole message around these four things. It was Jesus is incredible. Yeah. Faith is essential. It is. Waiting can fill or be intolerable. <laughs> Amen to that. Um, and yeah. Jesus, Jesus, his faithfulness is undeniable. It and is. so you just you framed everything around that, reminding us of that. And so it really it's those four things that I want to kind of frame our conversation okay. today. Okay. Um, so if you don't mind, we'll jump in, man, yeah. with a couple of questions and we'll see see how the Lord leads today. Sure. So sure. Um, but, you know, in our moments of desperation, some of us, you know, this is something that you pointed out, some of us kind of run to God, but others kind of run from God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some people want to lean into Him. Some people yeah. don't want nothing, anything to do with Him. Uh, but we see, you know, Jairus in that moment, you know, of his desperation, he chose to go to God. He chose yeah. to go to Jesus. Um, what do you think mm-hmm. um, determines which way someone might respond and why. Why do some run to God, and why do you think some run from God? Well, first of all, I think the level of your desperation kind of oftentimes, not always, like none of this is, you know, it's never exacting, right? I mean, yeah. it's, it, everybody responds a little bit different. And I think the, exactly the way I said it was yesterday is desperation can cause you to run far, you know, further from God, or it can uh, cause you to run to God. And Sometimes we just kind of get stuck right in the center of mm. and mediocrity, and we just. But, and, and a lot of that's because we're just frozen, you know. Like the the. But oftentimes, the deeper our desperation, the more extreme we might typically go. And I think ultimately, it kind of just comes back to you know what, what do we truly believe? I mean, mm. what do we truly? We've talked about that a lot on on the podcast in the past. That you know you're you're going to act according to what you believe. I mean, and uh, if if we, people have been listening for a while, we we had a conversation one time. I, I remember it that, you know, you believe that if you don't get dressed in the morning, you're going to have an embarrassing day. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You believe that. You believe it with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yeah. Right? So guess what? You get dressed every day before before you leave because you believe that. You know, um, I think that if there's something core within you that believe God does love you and that He cares mm-hmm. deeply about you. Then I think, as messy, like we said yesterday, as it might be, you're going to lean that way. And it doesn't mean you're not going to have questions. It doesn't mean that there aren't, you're not going to have days or, or seasons uh, of doubt or questions and, and all of that. 
Um, but I do believe that you're ultimately gonna hmm. you're gonna run that way. Now, if if you don't really believe, I mean, you could go to church every Sunday, you could do all of those things, but at the end of the day, if um, you don't really trust the Lord, um, and again, remember they're different degrees, yeah. right? But yeah. if you don't, but but at the base level, if you don't really trust the Lord that that He is for you, um, then your te- your tendency is going to be to revert to becoming your own God, right? Yeah. And to take care of your own problems. And and the other extreme, I would say, Nate, is the fact that some people blame God um, because they don't really know Him, you know, and they they don't have the proper um, understanding of of Him. And um, and so, because he hasn't done what they expected him to do, they blame him, and then that's the situation where I think they run away from him, and and they get angry, and you know, and all of those things. And and so I just think, I think that's that's um, that's kind of the way that is. But for Jairus, particularly as you mentioned, I, I think that he was pretty convinced hmm. about that Jesus was who he said he was and could do what he said he could do because. Of all that he risked, that that's what really impressed me yesterday when I really began to get to know who Jairus was. Um, when you look at who is a leader of the synagogue, and I began to do some background, you know, look at that and to see that, you know, because, you know, uh, the times or the in the in the biblical times or the Jerusalem in that time, I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say, yeah, uh, is that it was a theocracy, right? Yeah, um, which meant. And what that means is that the political rulers were oftentimes, or were also the religious rulers. And so if you were a member of the religious community of leadership, then you had um, some political leadership as well, or looked look to as a leader of the community. We'd still that way a little bit mm-hmm. in our, you know, in our context, but, but nothing like it was back then. And so he was a, he was an important guy, really important guy. And for him to fall at Jesus' feet was just took a lot. Yeah. Took a lot. I know uh so last uh month, um actually just just a few weeks ago, um, Chase had me on as his as his guest. I had just got done preaching about the storms. Mm-hmm. Um and, and a little bit like you yesterday, just had the opportunity, felt like God lead me to share just some personal storms that we had been through as a family and uh just a, a question that uh, Chase had asked, kind of dove into one of those specific things, and just mm-hmm. between my faith and my wife's faith, and it mm-hmm. was one of the mm-hmm. times where we lost, you know, a child mm-hmm. uh, that we were pregnant with, and I remember just me and her were at different places in in our faith and our journey. I'd been a Christian for a long time, and she was a little bit she was newer in her faith, mm-hmm. still growing in her faith, and mm-hmm. um, but I remember. Uh, it affected us. It, we both were hurting, and it was a, right. such a difficult thing, but it affected us differently as far yeah. as this response. Sure. Um, I had got to the point in my life where my reaction at that point when I had gone through things or when I would face things like that was to to lean towards God, to go mm-hmm. towards Him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember um, in her struggle, and, and understandably so, I remember her just sharing, um, she, she would say, I wasn't mad at God, mm-hmm. but I don't know if I wanted anything to really do do with him yeah, right i didn't yeah. i because you're hurt right? yeah she was hurt and she was it was yeah. almost like if god could maybe at least allow this maybe not cause it but allow it to happen it, you know it was like i don't know how close i want yeah, to be that? to that and uh and she and i've watched god uh grow her in her faith and just mm-hmm. through even different you know more difficult situations or whatever and so I've i've lived that um of just watching a different response when you find yourself in a desperate situation or pain or hurt. Well, don't you think we all wrestle with that to some degree? Absolutely. I mean, I mean in differing degrees, right? Because yeah. we're at different places in our journey with the Lord and everything like that. But I think even the what we would think the most spiritual among us, so to speak, you know, I think we all struggle with that. Yeah. At, at some point in some le- at, at some level, you yeah. know, because because we're all still trying to figure it out. <laughs> Yes, we yeah. are, and and we try and we try to fit God into our human understanding and experience. I think, and he's he's not he's above that. He's he's different than that. He's he's other than that, and we have to understand how he operates, or we we'll, or we put our expectations, our human level expectations, onto him, and that's where we get. We always get dis, we always get disappointed by our expectations. Yeah, we rise and fall. Um, by our expectations and what we, you know, what we think should happen, and so when, you know, we lose a child or we a child gets cancer, or a wife in my case gets cancer mm-hmm. again, um, you know, there is, 
you know, you have these expectations. You know, I, I, I know we're going to get into Micah's story a little bit later, yeah. but just to touch on it, I mean, there was a lot of that I felt like, what, what did I do wrong in his yeah. story? Um, in case you're just listening, you didn't get to hear yesterday's message that my son walked away from the Lord for a long time. And I would ask myself, this this is a wrestling match I had. What did we do wrong? And as a leader of my family, what did I do wrong um, that deserved this? Hmm. Like I knew I'd done things wrong. I mean, I, I knew I yeah. had, had done things perfectly, but but what I had what I had what had I done that was so wrong? You, you, you know what I'm? Yeah. You know that would that would cause him to not want anything to do with it. I mean, that was a wrestling match. Hmm. You know? Yeah, I feel like we when something bad happens, right? We're there's always looking who's at fault or who's mm-hmm. to blame and mm-hmm. whether we put that blame on God or whether we put that blame on ourselves or someone else. I yeah. think that's from that place. I know for me, and I think even from that conversation with my wife late, late one night, um, you know, one thing it reminded me of, of that determines how I respond. Do I, do I run to him? Do I run away from him? Is at my heart, do I believe that I can trust God with my hurt, mm-hmm. you know, or in my hurt? Yeah. And that's yeah. a difficult place to be. But if I come to the place where I feel like I can trust him in my hurt or with my hurt, um, usually I will find myself running to him. Well, well for you, how, how did how did that work out for you? Like, like, how did you come to a point where you felt like you could trust him? Yeah. I'm just in, in your hurt. Yeah. I'm curious to hear. Um, you know, I, I said this on the podcast when I was having this conversation, um, but I did make a choice a long time ago, and it's what I share with my wife. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been in church all my life. Right, yeah. I've been a Christian since I was nine, many, many years. Mm-hmm. I've been preaching and teaching it on yeah. a regular basis for a long time. Yeah. And I made a decision that um, either I was going to believe it or not. Mm-hmm. No mm-hmm. in between. Mm-hmm. So I'd already made that choice in my life. So obviously things happen that challenge that, right, that tempt you to doubt or to question that. But I made a choice. I was going to believe this no matter what. But through different circumstances and different storms and hurts and pains and difficult situations, you you decide, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust God in this moment. Um, and it's hard in the moment, but usually when you come out of it or get past it or down the road, you kind of look back. And then you discover, you know, well, was he trustworthy? Was he mm-hmm. faithful? Was he there with me the whole time? And so I at least have enough life that I've lived, enough things I've gone through that I've been able to look back and see his faithfulness and see that I can trust his heart. And... And I can, if I can trust his heart, then I can trust him with my hurt. I can yeah. trust him in the unknown. I can trust him in the desperate moments of my life. And so, well, yeah. it's interesting, you know, when when Jesus talked about, you know, if you had just a mustard seed of faith, hmm. um, you know, a lot of people talk about how small that is, and and it is, and that's important. I think that's that's probably the key teaching of it is how how small that that seed of faith is, but it's also a seed. You yeah. know, it's just the starting. And and it when it's planted it it grows you know and it becomes something and you're like ah oh, okay you know but, but sometimes you know you just got to plant the seed mm-hmm. of of faith and trust and I think for you know I'm 57 years old I've been walking with the Lord a long time and um, certainly have I think more faith today than I did when I was young of course I mean I would hope yeah. you know and, <laughs> and I think I do but part of that is because I have seen God God's faithfulness um, in like some pretty big situations. But, you know, you also have, Jesus said, let, let him who has eyes to see, let him see, or ears to hear, let him hear. I mean, you've got to be looking for it. Mm-hmm. You, you've got to be, you've got to be willing to um, open up your heart and your, and your eyes and your mind to the Lord to see what he's doing, because what he's, his ways aren't our ways, right? No, they're you know, not. They're, they're not. And, and, and yet his ways always are a blessing to our lives. And that, I think that's, that's what, again, at, to come back to the original question, mm. I think um, you're going to go with what you believe, but I do think believing is something, belief, I should say, faith is something that can grow and does grow. Yeah. And this might be a, a quick response, because I think we already kind of started to dive into it. A lot mm. of this, of how people respond has a lot to do with yeah. what they believe or their faith. But, you know, um, you know, kind of a, one of the foundations that you started with yesterday was you, you mentioned that what you believe mm-hmm. about the credibility of Jesus and the claims of the Bible or Scripture uh, makes all the difference in the world. Uh, the woman with the issue of blood who had tried everything, but then she heard about Jesus, and she decided and believed that he could heal her, yeah. that he would be her hope, that he would be everything she was looking for. 
Um, so there's this moment of choice and, and faith even in her to, to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so how does our view or belief about Jesus determine how we respond in those moments of desperation? I mean, we've been unpacking that a little bit, but just maybe dive down just a little bit deeper. Yeah. Well, you know, I was early on when I was, when Brian first invited me to talk about this text, that idea came to my mind was um, how we view the credibility of God. It makes all the difference in the world. But if yesterday I tried mm. to say to it with each message, it's, 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 then I added another little line with how you experience yeah. him. You know, it's with how you experience him. And everything rises and falls on, on how credible you think the Bible is, how credible you think Jesus is, because yeah. based on that is how, is, is really what you're going to make your decision on and how you move forward. And I do think that that's a, a progressive thing. I do think, like we've said, I think it's a it's a growing thing. Um, that I mean, my faith, like again, when I was thirty, is different than today. At, you know, at my age. Um, but when it comes to the of how we kind of wrestled through the situation with with Micah, um, and many things with our daughter too. You know, yeah. is is that I think we believed more than we didn't believe. Hmm. You know, we had we Who, we, we yeah. had more faith. Then we had lack of faith, but we did have lack of faith at times. There were many days when I struggled to 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 believe that anything was ever going to change. I mean, I was telling yeah. somebody yesterday they came up to me afterward, and and uh, I I knew that yesterday the, the tension I felt in yesterday's talk was that I'm going to tell everybody that there's hope, and they're going to feel that there's hope, and they're going to see our story and see that man, what what a what an amazing work that the Lord did. But yeah. there's so many people who are still in that struggle, yeah. and I wrestled that that I didn't give them one, two, and three points on you know how to how to live in that tension, you know, so to much uh, other than just don't quit, don't give up, you know, keep going. Um, but you know, for us, um, I think that we had seen enough of the truth of God in our lives that we were able to believe that in the end, and the end might be heaven. Hmm. I mean, we had to That's deal right. with the fact that the yeah. end might be heaven, but we believed in the end that God would honor his word, um, that Micah had made a profession of faith when he hmm. was young, and he had really, I, 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 we can remember as clear as a bell. I mean, what's interesting about that is Christy and I had a lot of debate around his faith hmm. about just conversation, really, because yeah. the heart of a mom would never for a second accept that maybe he wasn't a child of God. Yeah. And I'm wow. saying, but Mike, but, but Christy, I, I don't know what to say about that because I'm just looking at, you know, I'm just looking at his life. Mm-hmm. And so I'm still praying for his salvation because I don't know. Yeah. And because I don't know. So it, it was really interesting wow. to see the difference of how we just, um, how we looked at that. I mean, I look back on it now and I think mama was right. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I really do. I really think that Micah came back to the Lord. I'm not, I don't think that Micah came to the Lord. I think he came yeah. back to the Lord, but man, in those, in those, uh, in that season of wrestling, it was, it was super hard. And, and I was telling, like I said, I was started to say that I, I said to this, uh, it was a mother yesterday, um, that there were just there were just moments when I wasn't I wasn't sure that he was ever going to to come back, and and I couldn't understand that, and I just had to believe that God, um, God was God, and that at at the end of the day, He's going to do what glorifies Him, but it's always going to be for our good, you know, yeah. because we love Him. And we know that we're called, and it is nothing short of of just a faith walk. Amen. And you've got to just you just got to put one step in 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 front of the next one, I guess. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, it's not just a belief I have. I think it's just the reality for all of us that we all have faith in something or someone. Everybody has faith of some kind. Yeah, it's just do. a matter of where That's you where you put or place that yeah. that faith or trust. But what I find is when some of these moments come up in life. Um, they just determine, right? Mm-hmm. They they kind of reveal uh, even where 
we have placed our trust or who we have our faith and trust in. And so, you know, I, um, I read a I read an article and and I thought of about and bringing this in somehow and it just didn't work. But this person and it was kind of shocking when they were first saying it. They were saying that you know we call Hebrews eleven the Hall of Faith, mm-hmm. and we talk about um, the fact that all of these people had great faith in God. They had they had great faith in God. And his point was um, Hebrews 11 wasn't about the faith of those people. It was about the goodness of God. Hmm. That's the point of Hebrews 11. Not, not how strongly these people believed, uh, whereas other people didn't believe. It was the goodness of God manifest through, through these people um, that was that that's really the celebration of what uh, Hebrews 11 is really all about. And I, I think if, if we, if we believe that, if we center ourselves around that, that God is faithful yeah, and his love is real. Um, I want to, I want to get us to our next one, but just to mm-hmm. follow, cause you mentioned Hebrews 11. So I actually, um, this month I had the chance to speak at the men's gathering and kind of mm-hmm. I, I talked to deal, dealt with kind of just the fear of failure mm-hmm. and I, I I unpacked Hebrews eleven. Oh, interesting. And, and what's interesting about that passage to me is most of us are familiar with the first half, right? Where mm-hmm. there's all these amazing stories of of God, you know, raising the dead and right. shutting the mouths of of lions and parting the Red Sea, and it's all through faith and God's goodness and faithfulness mm-hmm. on display. Mm-hmm. But you get to the second half of that and the people he starts to talk about whom he says the world is not worthy of, but he doesn't give their names to many of them. Mm-hmm. But he talks about how they lost their life or they were put out or destitute or, mm-hmm. you know, they lost their life in multiple ways through persecution. And it just reminds me, it's still about trusting and putting our faith in God. Yeah, it is. And it doesn't all, and he even says these people didn't experience in this life, the fulfillment of all the promise. It was like afterwards. And you mentioned that, and it's such a hard thing, that tension you talked about of like, even if it's not, in this life, God is faithful. Mm-hmm. He's faithful to redeem and reconcile and to heal. And it, and eventually, if we just keep trusting and, and walking in faith, whether we see it in this life or the next, His faithfulness and His goodness will be on display for all eternity. Yeah. And so yeah. uh, it's, it's an important thing to hold on to sometimes. Um, but... Uh, this is this is the hard part. This is this is the thing that God's been teaching me for. A, it feels like a, a long season of my life, um, especially since uh, I've been married and, and ha- have had my kids. Some of the things we've been through, but you know, you talked about this part, and it was just it's just such the part that wrecked wrecked me, that wrecked you. It's just heart, it's just heart wrenching, right? But while Jairus is waiting on Jesus to get to his house, yeah. and yeah. hopefully heal his daughter, he, he's taking that step of faith. He's walking in faith. And we, I, I love the story of, of the woman with the issue of blood, but I think I told you at one point we were talking about the passage. If I was looking at it through the eyes of Jairus, I mean, I look at that as like an interruption that I don't right. have time for. Right. I'm glad you, I, I know uh, yeah. you have a need and you need a miracle, but my, my wife's, you know, I mean, my, my daughter's life yeah. is at, at stake. And so mm-hmm. he's waiting on this. They're going to the house and all of a sudden this woman and the issue of blood and the miracle takes place and they pause and they're waiting. Um, but in that moment, as you pointed out in the scripture, he, he receives the worst news right. any parent could. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned the the waiting on God seasons of life that you've experienced with with Christie's battle with cancer, mm-hmm. especially the second time around yeah. with Micah walking away from his faith in God. Mm-hmm. And so, what is it about? I mean, I think I think every person, no matter who you are, mm-hmm. um, we all know that waiting on God is so hard. And and why why do you think? Waiting is so hard. And then also, what do you think we learn about ourselves and even learn about God in the seasons of waiting? Well, first of all, for us, um, something that resonated in in my mind and in our – this was more me, I think, than Christy. But what was – obviously, the, the, the clear issue with the waiting was the fact that we were watching our son just devastate his own life. Mm. You know that he was getting deeper and deeper into his addiction, and his life was spiraling out of control. And there was this—I mean, it, it was the—it um, was the hardest thing to watch because it was kind of like two things. It was first thing was just what he was experiencing physically, but then it was also what he was missing spiritually 
but what he was missing spiritually would have addressed what he was mm. dealing with physically. Yeah. And so um, it was just this, God, he needs you so bad. And you know that. You know that he needs you. And you know that we need you to do this. Like, cause we can't do, we've, we've done everything we know how to do and we can't change his heart. Um, but, and it was, I couldn't see Nate. I, I, I struggled to understand how all of this could glorify God. I couldn't see, I, intellectually, I think I knew it as a, as a pastor mm-hmm. and, you know, and all of that, but I could not figure out for the life of me what God was doing and how this could, could glorify him. And I thought just the opposite though, if he came to faith, what that would mean to me, to him, to, I think yesterday was a great example, you know, of, of how encouraging it would be. And so the waiting wasn't just on the fact that our family, Mike could cause a a lot of dysfunction. <laughs> you know, mm. that's what addiction does. It, yeah. it's, it, that's why I want to point out like mm. what a sweet kid he was because he's always been a, he was a, just a great kid. Both of my kids are, are amazing. They really are. And we have incredible relationship with both of them. And even through all of this, mm-hmm. we still had a pretty good relationship with them. But, but addicts lie. They cheat. Wow. They yeah. steal. Um, they're, they're, um, it's all about, their addiction and and all of that and listen, on the scale of addiction, Micah was not at the worst. Hmm. There were, you know, we know yeah. people who are much much worse and deal with them a lot here at the church. But but addiction is addiction and it is narcissistic. And so, um, we would it it was just so hard to watch somebody steal from you, lie to you. Um. Uh, not really care about how it was ultimately affecting you, and it wasn't that he didn't care. It was that there was no room in his life to care. Yeah, you know. And so waiting on all of that to be resolved was just excruciating. It was, and and then there's this is the part I don't like to talk about. <laughs> the part I don't like to talk about is that it was embarrassing. Hmm. It was embarrassing for me as a pastor, probably more than anything. My wife, you know, uh, our private prayer, our very, very private prayer was always, Lord, why us? You know, the, all these other pastors, I mean, they got great kids and, you know, yeah. um, people's, they're, they're, they're great relationships with their kids. Kids are going to Bible college and all this other stuff. And, and here, um, and here we are for a season we were like oh for two, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. our, our little our little girl kind of wandered away for a while too, and it was just like, man, we stink, <laughs> you know, like we're terrible as parents, you know, and man, that was hard. It was embarrassing, and and I had many conversations with Brian about, not many, some conversations with Brian about worthiness to be on staff, because I'm thinking if I can't leave my own home, you know. And he, man, he was so gracious. In fact, one of the first people that Micah wanted to thank and express his change of of life and heart was Brian. And he made a beeline for him at his first service back to go up and and tell him. And because Micah was a champ, I mean, uh, Brian was a champion for Micah and and our family through all of that. And I'll tell you what, man, that's a pastor. Yeah. You know, that's a pastor. So, so I, I think I think that your question was why is waiting hard? Was that your question? Yeah, uh, sort of. I think it's because you're trying to under, ultimately understand where where's God, and and all of it, because it 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 doesn't feel right. It feels broken, hmm. and it feels um, uncoordinated. I mean that that's that's my that's our situation. Yeah. What what's yours? Man, I especially with some of the uh, health things with my kid. I think one reason why it's so hard is just at least for me, I think all of us, but for me as a dad, a husband, a man, you just you want to be able to fix things. You want 
that level of where you feel like you're in control. And when you're not in control and you realize it, when you realize you can't fix it or make it right, that is tough. I do think it, you know, you talk about some things that were exposed, right? You hate to admit it. Ex, I think it exposes just maybe where there's some pride and control issues, though. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think one of the biggest things that happens in the waiting is it reveals some things about us and it reveals some things about God that need to be revealed in our life. Mm-hmm. Um, but as difficult as waiting has been, what I've discovered in these different seasons is I've discovered what I really believe. Mm. I've discovered whether I really trust in God or not. Um, I think for many of us, many times we we really find our faith in the waiting, and that's tough. Um, a pastor I, I served with for many years, Ike Reichard, mm-hmm. who has his own, you know, difficult, desperate, you know, heartache moments of life. Um, he lost his uh, first wife and child in the same day. But I've heard him say many times that a faith that hasn't been tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Yeah, that's a great word. And uh, waiting tests us. Yeah. But if we can endure through the waiting season on the other end of it, yeah, we, yeah. we can find God many times and that he's trustworthy. Well, you know, it, it's, it's what James 1, 2 says. It says, consider it joy. You know, when, when you face uh, or experience different trials because you know that, that the testing of mm-hmm. your faith is what's going to provide endurance um, for you. And I, I think, you know, I think the second part of your question is what can we learn about ourselves? I think that um, one of the things that came out of this for us was that we needed a stronger faith. We needed a, a stronger base belief that he was who he said he was, he would do who, what he said he would do. Um, and that, and that heaven is part of that equation. Yeah. And and to 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 ultimately believe that all answers aren't going to come here. Some of them may come in in eternity. Um. But even while we're here on earth, that He's going to allow us to go through things for us to see, um, uh, His faithfulness. And our unfaithfulness, so that we can align ourselves more with who He is and what He wants for us. Because then, as our faith grows, I mean, I don't. I think most of us really struggle to see how good God really is, like how good He really is, right? Yeah. Because we never grow to a point of really putting our faith in Him. You you know. Um, and it's something that I, I, I think as I get, you know, in these um, latter years of ministry, um, I'm seeing that more and more and more. And I am beginning to just relax a lot more <laughs> in the faithfulness of God and not taking everything so seriously, you know, that whether it's finances or issues and, you know, and, and you know, a lot of the arguments that that Christy and I would have disagreements that she and I would have. I'd be like, I don't, I just don't need to be this passionate. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> not because I'm, not because I don't have any passion anymore, yeah. just because I know that um, I can just wait and just let God lead, and wherever He leads, it's going to be good. Hmm. It's going to be good, and um, and there is just such a peace in that, man. You know? That's so good. I mean, I think there's as much as we want to be in control, mm-hmm. right? But when we let go of that control, there is a weight that's lifted. Mm-hmm. And there's, a, you know, I mean, there's freedom in that that's hard to see, you know. Um, but when we, like you said, when we truly come to the place, and usually it takes us being tested, difficult moments to let go or surrender to, mm-hmm. to say, all right, I'm, I'm going to trust not in myself or anything else, but I'm going to trust in you, Lord, that we find some, that we find that peace or even that joy or even that freedom that comes with just saying, all right, oh, oh, this was the rest that Jesus was talking about when we, you know, yoke ourselves to him and come to him and, and respond to him. And so that's so good. I, I just want to say that one of the most encouraging things, just to kind of keep the conversation going, one of the most encouraging things that I felt like you shared yesterday, uh, a point you made about the woman with the issue of blood was her understanding was imperfect 
but her faith and trust was transforming. Mm -hmm. You even described her faith as messy. Mm -hmm. Um, I I, I can't be the only one who was encouraged by that (laughs) statement yesterday. Um, But it it just, I I think it's the question. We've been talking so much about faith, and I think faith is the thread through all of this, through our moment of desperation and just where we place our faith and trusting in Him and experiencing His goodness and all of that. But can you, I just wonder, I think someone might be listening, maybe was sitting there yesterday, and hopefully they were encouraged and and just that ounce of hope that maybe they really needed in their own desperate situation that they're going through or have been through. But can you have faith that isn't perfect? are messy, but it still moves the heart of God. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and here's why I can say that with with mm-hmm. with uh, complete confidence, is that our faith is never not messy. Mm. Our faith is never not messy. And our faith is always imperfect. And I know that's true for me. I think it's true for everybody. Yeah. You know, our, perf- our, our faith is not perfect because we are not perfect. There's only one perfect... Doug Chandler, shout out to Doug Chandler. That's uh, Jason's dad, Doug. He uh, helped me in my wood in my um, woodworking business for a long time, and you know we'd always be measuring things out, you know, and everything like that. And and I would say, well, you know, it's not perfect, but it's okay. And he goes, well, you know, there's only one perfect, and they killed him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he would say it. he would say it over and over again. Uh. But think about think about seasons and times, Nate, where you have where you have walked in faith. Was it perfect faith? Did you do it perfectly? Yeah. Did you make no mistakes in in your desire to trust God? No, you didn't, and neither did neither do I. So our faith is always messy. Hmm. Um, but here's here's an important point: it's always messy. It's always immature. It's always a little bit broken. But the mistake we can't make is, well, I'm just a messy, broken uh, Christian, and that's just who I am. And that's you know, you take that on as an identity, and 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 you become lazy. In that, because you kind of take that on and you just, well, mm. just who I am and what I yeah. am, and I'm just not gonna, I don't need to try any harder. It made me think of uh, Peter, who was writing to uh, the Gentiles when he was teaching these people who were like brand new to the faith, right? The Gentiles knew nothing about, you know, this God of, of Jacob and, and Israel and, and all of this, and they were being grafted in, and, you know, they didn't know anything. And he said, um, he said to them in, in 1 Peter 2 2, he said, uh, be like, newborn infants, um, desiring the pure milk of the word so that by it you might grow in your salvation. In other words, in other words, it's essential that you grow in your faith, not because God is sitting up there with a ruler and he's going to smack you on the knuckles when you don't you don't get it right, but he's got more for you. <laughs> that's the point. Yeah. And that's the reason he puts us in the the place of, of different trials, allows us to go through trials so that our faith is built so that he can use us more, but also give us more and release us more from, you know, the tension that we somehow have to be who he is. We have to somehow be the perfect. We have to be God. And that's our tendency. Our tendency is always, if we can do it ourselves, we always will. Yeah. Right? That's our tendency is to, is to always be God. Um, when we, whenever we can be, <laughs> you know what I mean? that is our nature. Yeah, and God wants to break us of that. Mm-hmm. I, I, he wants to break because because we're never going to be that. And if if our again we come back to expect, expectations, if our expectation is is that we're going to be our own God, we're always going to be disappointed. Mm-hmm. Always. I, I think of a couple of uh, scriptures. I think of one where um, Paul was writing, and he just mentions that you know that even when we um, are not faithful, God is. But he's faithful to himself, he's faithful to his name, he's faithful to his word. Um, but I do think it's important that even that messy, broken faith, whatever it is, it's mm-hmm. still placed in Jesus. That's right. And he receives it. Don't ever let it stop you, I think, is the point. Yeah. Just because you don't understand it and it doesn't make sense and you don't have a Bible verse, you know, or whatever to to substantiate it in that moment, you can get that later. You can you can clear it up and clean it up a little bit more, you know, as as you grow. But don't ever let the fact that that your walk with God is imperfect stop you from pursuing Him mm. and leaning into Him. But again, I, you know, I was thinking on the way here. I just think it's so important, though, that that we do le- we do learn to lean into Him, and we do we do educate ourselves. And I mean, it's why we exist as a church, right? Yeah. To to, to serve one another, but to help each other know God more, mm-hmm. because. There's more and more freedom in that because I was I was thinking about you know somebody who does take on that 
the identity of a messy Christian. It's think about like, think about it like this. If I said, "Well, I'm just a miserable husband. I'm just a bad husband. You know, I'm just not good at it." You know, and um, is that okay? No, <laughs> that is yeah. that, that it, it's it's not okay. We understand because every one of us could say that we need to grow and be better husbands and 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 um and that we're messy husbands at times but we can never stop trying to be better hmm. and and to grow more as as good husbands because our wives deserve our wives deserve that our kids everybody who's around us we deserve you know um more than that yeah for ourselves I think there's a reason that Jesus reminds us that He is the the author and finisher of our faith. He is. So if, I mean, word. there's a there's a beginning <laughs> into it. Yeah. Um, I, I think of another father in Scripture who was in a desperate situation, and Jesus was like, "Just just believe." And the guy's mm. like, "I I do believe, but <laughs> help my unbelief That's if there's right. any right. Help my doubt." Um, yeah. The last statement, I, and I want to end on on this note. But one last okay. statement, I would just want to okay. say this to our listeners: a troubled faith is better than no faith. That's right. That's a good word. You know, and so whether it's broken or messy or you're not sure of everything, but in that moment, the, that mustard seed of faith that I might have, God, I'm going to place it in you, Jesus, and trust you mm-hmm. with it and just watch what he might do with it yeah, and do in good. your life. I couldn't think of a better way. I mean, all that stuff, all these different experiences, all these different stories, uh, me and you talked a lot leading up to yesterday, and, mm-hmm. and I just wanted to be an encouragement to you. Yeah. I knew you had that passage. That passage has wrecked me as well, but just your own story that you've been through and I don't think we always have to unpack our, our full life every time we get up and proclaim yeah, God's Word, right. but there's something powerful when you, when we're just vulnerable and yeah. honest, and there was a moment for that for you yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, but ultimately, there's a purpose for that. It's not just us sharing our story. It's about His story, and you said that yesterday, Micah's mm-hmm. story, your story, you and Chrissy's story. It's God's story, and so it's really, at the end of the day, this is always about pointing people to Jesus. Right. And so we see in these two stories and situations, we see his we see Jesus' power and faithfulness on display. He heals the woman of her disease. He raises uh, Jairus' daughter from the dead. So from maybe some of those moments of desperation, our brokenness, our seasons of waiting, the, you know, our, our, our struggle with our faith even, how can we use this story, our own stories, to share the good news of Jesus with our friends, family, and others? How, how do you take that and then share Jesus and point people to Jesus with that? Well, I think the encouragement that we get from these stories is the fact, um, and really they're, they're not just stories, they're events mm. that happened. And I think that they speak to what really moves the heart of God. And that is our simple faith that he is who he said he is and can, can and will do what he, what he said he will mm. do. And he is Savior. I, I think so many of us, you know, I, I talk about this as a theme of my life a little bit, that he's not only the Savior of the penalty of our sin, he's the Savior over the curse of our sin, which means... Because the penalty kind of has to do with eternity, you know. We stand before the Lord, and you know we're going to be yeah. we're going to be invited into heaven because because Christ took on um, uh, became the propitiation or the, the substitute for our sin, you know, on the cross, and and then and then crushed it, you know, and at the resurrection. It's why the resurrection matters, right? Um, but there's a season between now and then, right? yeah. you know, and he's in our, he's our savior then too. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what he saves us from is the curse of my own sin and not just my own sin, but he saves me from the curse of your sin. In other words, I don't have to be a slave to somebody else's dysfunction. Mm-hmm. I can turn to the Lord and he will, he promises, promises me by his Holy spirit to lead me and to guide me out of that. And so I think what, the story says is, is that God has a desire when you act in simple, sometimes messy faith. First of all, you can come to him in your messy faith. We've already kind of talked yeah. about that. But then secondly, that the Lord is waiting and wants to respond to your to your faith that he is who he said he is. That he's waiting and he and he wants that. Um I think Paul was trying to explain that to the Romans when he said in Romans 5, 8, that he demonstrates his love for us and he, he proves uh, his love for us and that while we were yet sinners, in other words, mm. while we were still in our messiness and brokenness and all this other stuff, he came to us, you know, he came to us, he moved toward us. And so, but what does he, what does he require? He requires that we see him as God and not ourselves, <laughs> 
you know, yeah. you know, and so simple faith that you are who you say you are. And then, and he is waiting to respond to that no matter how uncertain you. So what I guess that means is to somebody who is unsaved or maybe brand new in their faith is, is that you can take that simple step and then your understanding will catch up and then you can take the next step and your understanding that will catch up, you know, that yeah. just, just put your faith, walk forward in simple faith and, um, and God will prove, prove your effort, um, worthy hmm. and right. Um, and you'll see that over and over and over again, but, but it starts with this, that seed of faith. And so I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, man. I, <laughs> you know, one reason why I was just wanted to encourage you so much over these last couple of weeks is I know you were just wrestling with, do I share some of that personal stuff right, yesterday? Yeah, right. Really wrestled with it. Um, you talked to Christy, you talked to Micah and, and my encouragement to you was I really, I, just, I, I felt like you, you know, you should. I felt like God would use it, yeah. uh, and yeah. and then obviously use. You were the, a huge encouragement you, to me. Use the scripture. Use use Jesus in the story, right? Mm-hmm. As well, ultimately. Hey, can I just interrupt you for yeah. one second to tell you this? Mm-hmm. I had a tremendous. I told Micah this yesterday. I had a huge crisis of of belief, um, sort of, so mm-hmm. sort of. Um, Saturday, I was mm-hmm. out in my woodshop working, you know, finish working on a project, and I just had this thing within me. I, I couldn't, I wrestled with, don't tell that story. Ooh. Don't tell that story. It, people aren't going to receive it well. Um, it's it's not going to come across well. It's not going to prove your point. I mean, it was just this. It, I mean, it was heavy on me, Nate. Wow. It was it was heavy on me. And I had to just, I mean, I, I for hours, I just, it just kept coming back to my mind. I had to go back into my closet and say, God, I just need you to confirm, is is this what we're hmm. supposed to do? Because I didn't want to shame my my son. Yeah, I didn't want to embarrass my family. Um, I didn't want to expose myself, you, you know. Um, and then the Lord just said, "None of that's going to happen. Hmm. None of that's going to happen." That that was. I don't know if that was the enemy. I don't know if it was on my own self doubt, but just at the last minute, <laughs> I, I just yeah. don't know if that just encourages some people. But but. I, I just I wanted to share that with you that, mm. that man it was just this thing and and I felt like it was I, I do think ultimately it was the enemy yeah. I think the enemy was trying to put uh, was planting seeds of doubt in my mind um, and and I just had to work through it I just had to work I had to go back to prayer and back into my closet and say God here's what's going on and He affirmed it a hundred and fifty percent and then I did it and and what I had hoped. What happened from it seemed to have happened. Yeah, I, and I'm glad. I'm glad that you know. I was I was praying for you uh, through the week. I was praying for you on Saturday and thinking about you. And and I just knew. I just believed in my heart. God was going to move in a powerful way in people's lives. Because what I know is people people are searching in their desperation and pain. They're searching for hope. Yeah. Every one of us. But it is in that moment of desperation and pain that we can point people to Jesus. Yeah. And I felt like that's what God did yesterday. I, I certainly hope so. Um, I'm going to end with one quote, and I'm going to close this out. Okay. But uh, it's one of my favorite quotes. I've kind of cling to it. It's just I mean, when you find yourself in these moments of pain and desperation and heartache and waiting, things that are so hard, mm-hmm. um, I think of how, but how God uses them in our life and other people's lives. But C.S. Lewis said this, God whispers to us in our pleasures. He speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pains. Mm-hmm. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Wow. I think God just uses those moments, and He used you yesterday, and I, I'm you, grateful man. for that. Well, um, glory is His, man. Amen. It's not mine. I can't amen. handle it. Amen. I can't, it'll mess me up. It <laughs> um, can't be my glory. It has to be His. It's all His. Uh, but, man, thank you so much just for sharing your heart yeah, and sure. your story, not only yesterday, but but this morning um, mm-hmm. with us this week. Um, for you guys that are tuning in, just thank you so much for listening. Um, if you haven't already, be sure to download or subscribe or share the podcast so we can get this encouraging conversation to as many people as possible. West Ridge, we love you. God bless. You've been listening to the After Message edition of the West Ridge Podcast. Join us next week for another engaging conversation. 